The second book that I ever self-published was called Overcoming Financial Failure, A Peace Treaty with the System. It's a title that I really kind of hate now. Originally, the book was inspired by a challenge to write consistently for 30 days on a subject that I knew much about, knew a whole lot about, and uh, I thought, man, what do I know about? This was back in 2016, and I didn't know a whole lot of nothing at the time. It was a rough spell for me. It's like, what do I know about? And what came to mind was, well, I know how to fail financially. So originally, I was going to call the book How to Be a Financial Failure, probably not a self-help book. But I took some advice from someone who uh, suggested that I t change the title, so I ended up changing it to something that... Uh, just didn't resonate with me at all. So after I changed the title from How to Be a Financial Failure to Overcoming Financial Failure, that totally changed the way that I approached writing it. And I started kind of trying to turn it into a self-help book, which is just ridiculous for somebody that had failed financially for so long to be trying to write a self-help book on money. But it was like, it was kind of just like this transparent attempt to, to change my relationship with money and, and share it with other people, and maybe it would be useful. I think that despite the horrible title, in some ways, Overcoming Financial Failure is probably my favorite book of mine that I've written. Uh, it's just... it's... It's just hard to categorize because if you look at it as a as a guide to overcoming financial failure, it's it's pretty precarious. If you look at it as a very dynamic memoir and exploration into like the reasons that people struggle financially and their efforts to improve themselves despite that, I think that it somehow becomes a pretty remarkable piece of work. Now when I wrote Overcoming Financial Failure, my brain had kind of been hijacked by a, a dissociative chemical that I was incredibly dependent on, and it changed the way that I thought and the way that I perceived the world, and kind of blew the hinges off of my ability to be aligned in any meaningful way with present reality. So there's a lot of that in there, which also makes it a really kind of interesting exploration into the mind of someone that is addicted to dissociatives. By dissociative, if you ever know somebody that robo-tripped or did ketamine, that's what I'm talking about. A little bit after I released Overcoming Financial Failure, I was contacted by a mentor and professor of mine who was super compelled by what he read in the book. And I remember he told me, man, you could write about anything and make it interesting. And he said that he thought that the book had a much, much, much bigger audience than I had ever imagined. And he even said that he wanted to use it in a psychology across the lifespan course at uh, Siena Heights University, where he was a professor at the time. It's very, very exciting news for me at the time. I mean, it just blew my mind. Um, and I wondered since then, you know, does this book actually have a bigger audience than I imagined? Uh, it never got used at Siena Heights because that professor uh, got cancer and had to retire early. Due to the aforementioned drug dependency and other mental health factors and all kinds of downward spiral type stuff, uh, I never really got to see the potential of that book and never did reach a wider audience. And um, everything fell apart and I just stopped trying and when I finally cleaned up my life, I, I, was, I was looking back and I was like, well, maybe maybe I could re-release some of my older work like through, through a fresher mindset and, and actually put more effort into marketing and reaching people, whereas in the past it was pretty much, I'm just going to put this stuff out there and just like hope that people find it and love it and spread it word of mouth. You know, that, you know, it, it doesn't work. The market is, self-publishing market is way too saturated for that. Unless, I don't know, unless just like the right person happens to find it, which, you know, 
for me. It just didn't work out that way. So in this new chapter of my life, I have rebooted my writing career, starting with the second edition of my first book, The Art of Being Human. And I'm going to follow that up with a second edition of Overcoming Financial Failure, but change back to the original title of How to Be a Financial Failure, with the subtitle of If You Do the Opposite, It's a Self-Help Book. How to Be a Financial Failure will be revised and expanded to some extent. I'm not going to go into a full-on mode of articulating everything that I've learned since then. I'm just going to do a general summary. And when I reach a certain financial goal of mine in my personal life, I am going to write a sequel. It's, a, it, it's pretty much a goal that is high enough for me to know that once I hit that goal that I will have some kind of authority about writing about uh, how to transcend financial ineptitude. And, uh, you know, we'll see. If, if there's never a sequel, you'll know that I never made it. But I mean, like... You bet your ass I'm going to make it.